though. This is going to be now at the beginning of the recording. Um, I do want to bring up those of you that are transferring or planning on transferring to the UN architecture. Uh, so if you're, you're not, then don't worry about this. But um, those of you that are, they are holding a portfolio workshop. And unfortunately, it's during our spring break. I guess their spring break is next week and ours is in two weeks. Um, but if you're planning on transferring to the U for sure this year, then you should go to it. But even if you're going to plan on transferring next year, I would suggest going to this because it'll give you kind of a head start on, you know, kind of what they're looking for when you submit your portfolio. So the workshop is Wednesday, March 20th, 2019. It's at 5 p.m. It's up at the University of Utah in the School of Architecture. Um, and I think it'd be good for everybody to go who is transferring. If you want to go, I'll count this as one of the extra credit events that you can go to. So you can, you know, um, let's see. Where, there we go. It's grayed out. Oh, not in this one. Let's go to 2350 here. Assignments. There we go. So one of these extra credit assignments, you just obviously, you know, you go to the event, you click on it, um, and then you just do what it says here, and you can get extra credit for it. Okay, so if you want, you can count that as one of your extra credit assignments. But uh, they weight the portfolios at the U for uh, entrance into the program, right? You have to be accepted. They weight them about 50% of um, ex what they're looking for for acceptance, right? So it's a pretty big deal. All right, so today we're gonna we're changing it up just a little bit. We're gonna go over foundation walls today. Um, we're gonna go over 3D views today and how to use those 3D views to create um, like your cover sheet, essentially, okay? And I wanna go over that first. So I'm gonna create the cover sheet. I'm gonna right click over here under sheets and I'm gonna choose new sheet. And I'm gonna choose the 22 by 34 size that I want. And by doing that, I get a new sheet here, and Revit somewhat anticipates the numbering of it, right? AE104. And I'm going to change that number to, I'm just going to call it cover. There we go. Okay. And so this is my cover sheet now. Okay. And I'm going to give it a name here. Cover sheet. Looks good. And there's essentially nothing on it right now. Okay. So part of the assignment says create a 3D view and place that on your cover sheet. And to do that, you know right now that to pop into a 3D view, I can come up here to this quick access uh, 3D um, option right here. I can click on that and I pop into 3D, right? You also know that over here in your project browser, you have 3D views. If you open that up, you can click, click on 3D views and here we are, okay? One thing I wanna remind you is that right now, this is currently in a shaded view, right? It's, it's color. I want to change this to a hidden line view. So when I go to print, um, it looks maybe more like this, okay? So right now, currently, however I sort of, um, you know, browse around and move my model about, that's what my 3D view looks like, okay? That's what this 3D view looks like right here. And the second that I zoom in or I move or I you know, do something different, uh, that 3D view is updated, okay? So I guess my point in saying that is that if I wanted to take this 3D view and I wanted to place it on a, my cover sheet, um, that's great. But if I come into this 3D view right here and I move my, my plant, my little building about, right? This is going to be updated, which means that the view on my cover sheet will be updated, okay? So essentially what I want to do is I want to find a view that I like that I want to place on my cover sheet, which means maybe we'll just kind of, maybe I'll use my view cube to get a perspective view. Okay, and it kind of looks like that. That looks pretty good. I'm going to find a view that I want, and then I'm going to right click, and I'm going to copy, or sorry, duplicate with detailing that view. Okay, so now I have this view. Oh, it looks like it zoomed out just a little bit. I'm going to zoom in. And I can right click on this and give it a new name. I can call it like cover sheet image, right? 
And what that does is it does exactly what we've done up here. It creates a copy and it makes its own kind of standalone version of that view. So I could take this uh, cover sheet image and I could pull it onto a sheet. And then when I pop into this default 3D view and I move around, that view doesn't, it's not affected by that. Okay. So I've got this view. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go over to my cover sheet. I'm going to click on my 3D cover sheet view, drag it over, let go, click, and I place it and I have a view there. Now, that's great, but Revit has added these new little grid uh, level lines here in 3D, this, this version of 2019, which I don't really like. So I'm gonna go back over to my, three, my uh, cover sheet image. And of course, as I move around, I'm changing the view, but I'll put it back where I want it. I'm gonna grab those, right click, uh, hide in view elements, and I'm just gonna hide those, right? And in fact, if there's something that I like or don't like, I'll just hide it in this view. Uh, let me do that. I'll show you. I grabbed all those items I didn't want to see. I right-clicked. Hide in view. Elements. Yep. So now those have disappeared, and I have a good view. Of course, we don't have a roof yet. We don't have the basement completely done. We'll talk about that today, right? Um, but as you add those elements, as you get the roof in there, and as you add the basement and all that stuff, this view will update, and it will update on the cover sheet. Okay. One thing I do want to point out, I know I drug, I took this, I drug, dragged, drug <laughs> this uh, view onto my cover sheet. Right. It's kind of tiny. Um, one thing I want to show you is that my 3D view also has a scale, which is tricky because you know you don't. Really, the intent is not to scale the view like this, um, but I can take this and change it to like a quarter of an inch. And then on my cover sheet, which I have open in a tab here, it's bigger, right? So I could click on it, drag it over, maybe put it down here where I want it to go. Click on this little view title, put the view title below it. Click on the viewport, I get a grip, I can drag it in, looks the way it should, okay? Uh, you can do that with as many, you know, you can capture as many 3D views as you want, essentially, right? So not only, I like to have students do this because not only is this good for, like, the cover sheet, um, but I can't tell you how invaluable this is for a client. Um, I do this all the time if I work on projects of my own. Uh, you know, I will, number one, I'll either kind of screen capture like I do with you and I'll, I'll go into the model and I'll just kind of pan around it and let them look at the model, right? So they can see spatially what it looks like. Or I will just take and I will create just a ton of these little views and I'll just place them all on a sheet. I could put 10 or 15 on a sheet and then, you know, the person has this 3D view of, you know, their space to look at, which is, again, invaluable. I mean, it, the, you know, a, a lot of clients aren't as visual as most of us are, and so it's hard for them to kind of, uh, in their mind, imagine what a space is going to look like, but the second you show them a 3D view, it's, it's immediately clear, right? So this is really a great tool. So I could sit here and copy and have a bunch of these and pull them onto sheets, um, or I could create one specifically for my cover sheet, okay? Um, does that answer all your questions about that? Good, good. Uh, the other thing about the cover that you can do, right, um, is if you wanted to add some more text here, right, you can. So we have a 3D view here, but we don't have anything else. Um, although we know how to create text, right, I could go to annotate, and I could go to text. You know, I could use my quarter inch Arial and draw like a little text box there. I could center the text. Maybe I have to type it first. Huh. Yeah, I'll type it first. But maybe we could call this um, a view cabin late term project. Enter, hit close. And then I could justify it in the center. Right? So that, maybe that's not big enough. So I could hit edit type, duplicate. Maybe I want to do a one inch text. So I'll change my text size to one inch, and I will change the font. We'll maybe do good old city blueprint. 
okay and you can add text right so um, if you wanted to do like a list of consultants or designers or engineers or you know just kind of play around and add different information um, it's always good but that's a pretty standard this is just a very basic standard cover sheet now this is kind of a side topic but you know as you work through a set of construction drawings you'll also have things like general note sheets and symbol sheets and things like that right and this is sort of how you would lay out those sheets as well right so I create a sheet if I needed to create general notes I would just add a text box here and I would just type my general notes in there right if I very simply right um, okay so as I look at this little house, one thing I do, another thing I want to bring up, maybe today is going to be kind of a collection of things that I think will help your models look a little bit more um, complete. I'm going to go back to my main level here, and let me pull up, let's go to our downloads, let's, oh, downloads, and view cabin, arch set. There we go. I want to bring up the uh, the topic that we have a little deck out here, right? And uh, deck this deck is actually I think a pretty important feature of this house, um, especially probably where it's located. Um, these people probably like to go outside a lot and they like to be outdoors and view nature and enjoy the environment. And so this deck here uh, and this deck over here, pretty important little features on this house, right? Uh, I just want to show you how you can go about creating those decks. Okay, so let me pull this up here. There we go. All right, the way that we're going to generate those decks is we are going to use a floor type to create the deck. We're just going to create a, a floor deck type and we're going to draw it and that will be our deck. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tab, tab, click, and I want to create a new floor type. I'm going to hit edit type, duplicate. We'll call this, um, uh, we'll do two by, maybe we'll do like two by twelves. Two by twelve, uh, wood joys, two by twelve, deck, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to hit edit here for my structure, and I'm going to remove the plywood sheathing from my floor type, delete. I'm going to leave my wood uh, joist or rafter here, it's fine. And we'll make this 11 and a quarter. Okay, so I hit OK. OK again. I just created a new floor type. And now I just really need to actually create the floor that's going to be my deck. So let's see, let me look at the dimensions here. It looks like it starts here and comes out to that grid line and then goes down. And let's see, do we have a dimension on it? Hmm. It doesn't look like there's quite a dimension on that lower portion. Maybe four or five feet, unless I'm not seeing it. Maybe they should have had another grid line here that indicated where that deck went. Anyway. Oh, and I'm also going to create this little area, this little deck area. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go to architecture and I'm going to go to floor, architectural floor. Of course, I bump into sketch mode. I'm going to use my little uh, drawing tool here and I'm just going to draw my deck. So <clears throat> I'm going to keep it fairly simple and looks like it goes from here out to that grid. We'll take it down to there. We'll draw an additional. I would bet maybe five feet. And it looks like it comes over here. Huh, I guess it's a guessing game for us. <laughs> Let's do, well, 38 feet's a good round number, right? So we'll go to there 38 feet, unless you want to measure it, which I don't right now. And I'm just going to follow the line of the house to be very simple about it. Okay. And I'm going to stop there for a second. I want to show you um, and, or, and or remind you that I can use my modification tools uh, on sketch lines to, to, to help me draw these things, right? Which is maybe something you didn't think about. 
So I could come up here to trim or type TR, trim, click, and I could click, click, and that trims those lines together, right? So I can use my modification tools on um, sketched geometry as well to help me generate that, okay? So I've created my, my deck. It's on the main level. That looks good. I'm going to hit finish. Uh, you go, okay, you are, it does, so you are, if you do it in test mode, you have one more, and I see you're in the hand Uh-huh. That's another common thing. So Gabriel was trying to sketch, I'm going to show you guys this, he was trying to sketch, and all of a sudden he was like, wait a minute, I've lost, I'm in sketch mode, but I've lost my tools. Right? Where did they go? This is something that happens. Uh, you can go to other tabs while you're in sketch mode, but they don't do you a whole lot of good. Most of the stuff is grayed out, right? You can accidentally go to another tab. If you need, if you ever find yourself in sketch mode stuck, not being able to see your tools, um, just go back to this highlighted tab and you'll find them again. Okay, so I have my floor. Um, but it look, oh wait, did I draw it with the, uh, oh, I accidentally drew it with my concrete slab. So I need to drop down, excuse me, and choose my deck. Looks good. Although I don't have a hatch on there. So what's happening here is um, I'm going to go to my wood deck and hit edit type. I'm going to hit my structure. And I'm going to change the pattern of this wood joist rafter here. So I'm going to click on that material, and I look here at my material that is already existing. I can look over here at my surface pattern, right, and I don't see one, okay? So I can click on my surface pattern, and I can find some horizontal lines here. There's some horizontal lines. Okay, 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 five okays, <laughs> and there we go. So I did get that pattern here as well because... Um, well, I, maybe my plywood actually has that same wood associated with it. Oh no. I didn't rename that floor type, did I? That's weird. It looks like maybe I somehow changed that. Anyway. So there's my deck. And I pop into 3D. And there's my little deck. Great. Okay. I'm going to go back to my main level. Click, click. Now I'm going to draw this little area. Well, you could draw this. I don't have it drawn accurately, obviously. Um, but the way that this sort of functions is the walls kind of come in, right? And you would just draw this little deck area as another piece of floor. Okay. So add those to your little house. I think that that would really, I mean, it helps add detail and show the design intent. Uh, to create a railing, we'll jump ahead just a tiny bit because we can, right? To create a railing, which we'll learn a little bit more about when we create stairs. Let me show you how to create a railing around this. I'm going to go into my main level again. Okay. And you're going to notice on your, the architecture tab here under build, we have a railing option. All right. So I can drop down and I can choose sketch path. And I, again, I bump into sketch mode. You're going to start noticing a lot more sketched type um, items as you get more advanced into your, your model geometry. And I have a drop down here that will allow me to choose what kind of, uh, of guardrail I want, what design. So there's glass panel, there's pipe, there's rectangular, um, whatever you want. I'm just going to choose, uh, I think I'm going to choose a, we'll stay with the rectangular handrail. The way that a, a railing works is you draw them in straight lines. Um, and they have to be connected straight lines. And what I mean by that is I can't do a railing that looks like that because those are two unconnected lines, right? So if you think about a stair, if there were a stair in the middle here, 
it would be very natural to say, well, I'm going to draw a railing here, and I'm going to draw a railing there, and that will be finished. But Revit doesn't work that way. Railings need to be one continuous line. So you'll draw one side of a, of a stair railing, and then you'll draw the other side of it, essentially. Okay. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my line tool, and while I'm in the sketch mode for my railing, and I'm going to do a little tricky thing here. I'm going to give an offset of six inches to that draw tool. Okay, now watch what happens when I do that. I'm going to draw my railing all the way around the edge of my, ooh, six inches is too much maybe. Maybe I'll do uh, three inches. Do you see how as I'm drawing, I'm clicking over here on the edge of my patio, but the railing is generating three inches over from that. That's what an offset will do for when we're drawing. Things we talked about, but I think, you know, we talked about them a little while ago and maybe you forgot and you haven't actually seen somebody, you know, doing this in practice. So I keep going. If it's on, if the, if the offset is on the other side, I can space bar. Okay. And I'm just panning. I'm going all the way to the end of my deck. Click. Click again. We'll just, we don't want that to go by the door. <laughs> there we go, we'll end right there. Well, that didn't kind of join the way I wanted it to, right? So I'm gonna trim TR on my keyboard, TR, click, click. Ooh, some of these actually, most of the time these will clean up. Trim, 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 trim. And there is my one big, long, continuous line of railing, all right? I've chosen the railing type, I hit finish, and I pop into 3D, there's my little railing, right? I can click on it and change the type if I want. I can go to bottom fill glass panel, you could do that if you wanted, whatever you want the railing type to be. Okay, so now if I go back to my cover sheet, just to kind of illustrate what I was talking about, right? Oh, that one didn't update, that's interesting. Let's go back to cover sheet image. Oh, it did update. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong side. Um, yeah, maybe I want to show the deck now, right? So I'm going to the cover sheet image, which means that when I when I change the view, if I go to this other side, zoom in a little bit, right? Now when I go to my cover sheet, there is my updated cabin. Okay. All right. Any questions on railings or adding the deck or anything like that? Yep. Why was it showing up at all? What's not showing up at all? It shows up in 3D but it doesn't show up in your floor plan? Yes. Is it that if you go to your main level, does your crop region allow it to show? Number one. Okay. Number two, come down here do you, to your little reveal hidden elements. Click. Is it shown magenta? No. no. Okay, let me come look. Those would be kind of my first two troubleshooting things. You know, the view, allow it, and then <laughs> so it is there. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's just always a tricky one. It was like, hey, I know I draw my floor. I know that it's there. I see it in 3D. I go to my floor plan, right? But I can't see it. This is just, again, one of those really, really common things that happens. He was looking in his main level but it was his ceiling plan. So click, click. Of course, you know, immediately you're looking for your deck, not noticing that you see all your lights and stuff, right? But it was because he was looking at his ceiling plan. Okay. So we have, we have our deck. Um, we can put these views on sheets. 
Let's talk about adding foundation walls now and footings to your little project here, uh, making it look a little bit more whole. And then next week we'll talk about roofs and stairs and those things should just really, I think, you know, make this project look like it should, essentially. Now, if you want to get a head start on that, let me go to modules here. I did this special, I think, last semester because um, roofs, again, roofs are a little complicated. So um, in addition to the YouTube video on, you know, chapter 11, which is roofing, putting a, not roofing, but putting a roof on your Revit model, right? So what a roof is, how we create three different roofing types, all that good stuff. I created two specific videos that, oops, let's go back here, um, that run through how to like I would lecture in class, essentially. There's two of them. There's part one and there's part two. So these are a little bit more informal. They're more lecture type. So if you wanted to get ahead um, over the weekend and start learning about roofs before we talk about them formally, then you can look at lecture, you know, part one on roofing and part two, and that will start getting you going on roofing. All right, let's talk about foundation walls here because in your late-term project, um, you are going to be required to create um, some foundation walls, all right? Um, foundation walls are the same, but different from other walls in Revit. And they're the same in that they are a wall type, um, or they're a wall. They, are a, they have a wall type associated with them. They have a top constraint and a bottom constraint, and they're associated with a level, okay? So foundation walls are similar to other walls in those aspects. Um, what is different about a foundation wall um, from other walls in Revit is in how they're sort of defined slash created, okay? So a main level wall like this one, when we generate these in Revit, they're generated from the base growing upward, okay? So they start here. They move in that direction. A foundation wall, when it's generated, it starts at the top and it generates down. Okay, so it starts here and it generates downward. Uh, which somewhat makes sense. It does because you're, you're kind of, if you think about it, digging down and you're creating a wall in the earth, right? So that does make sense, um, but it makes them, I think, you know, I, it makes them a little bit tricky to think about. It makes them a little bit tricky to, to create, okay? So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to show you how I go about generating foundation walls. And I've done it several different ways, but I just kind of feel like the way that I, the system that I have has been the easiest and it always functions. So I'm just going to show you that way of doing it. I'm also going to show you how to create the little footings below the foundation walls so that you can all start generating those, okay? But before I start generating both of those, I want to define a foundation wall and a footing in Revit because, uh, not that we're going to confuse it, but you know, you may go into an office or you know, whatever, learn from somebody else, I guess. When you, when you look at the Revit interface and you go down to structure, structure, um, you may or may not have noticed that there is a foundation wall and a foundation uh, footing tool here, okay? And we, we kind of talked about with other elements in Revit how we have elements that are architectural and, and they're created for design intent, and then we have elements that are considered structural, right? And I compared it to layers in AutoCAD, where structural elements are like structural layers where a structural engineer will use those tools and that person will be responsible for them, right? Um, using these structure tools sort of designates them to the structural engineer. So somebody who went into your model, I think, would assume that they're not from the design team, right? They're from the structural engineer. So we try and stay away from items like that, right? We don't want to use the the quote foundation wall, the defined foundation wall, or the defined um, 
footing tool in the structure tab. Okay, we are going to stay away from that. Uh, they're, they're actually pretty easy to generate. Uh, they're really difficult to redefine. So um, all things aside, we're just going to you know stay away from these two tools. The way that we're going to generate our foundation and footing is we're going to use the architecture tab and we're going to use the wall tool here. Okay, And the way that we're going to think about generating these walls, uh, we're going to create a wall type for each one and we're going to generate them from the main level down. Okay, we're not going to generate them from the basement up. We're going to generate them from the main level down. All right. So first thing when I start thinking about foundation walls is I need to define a foundation wall essentially. So I'm going to go to the wall tool and I'm going to find a wall type that is very similar to a foundation wall that I want to create. So I think a 12 inch concrete retaining wall is pretty close to an 8 inch foundation wall. So I'm going to hit edit type, duplicate, we'll rename it, we'll call it foundation, and we'll, we'll just do an 8 inch. Okay, hit edit. The structure of this wall is going to be concrete cast in place, so that all stays the same. But instead of being a foot in thickness, we may have to alter this because this might be thicker than I'm thinking, actually. Um, we'll do 8 inches. We may need to alter that, though. Okay, okay. And I just created my foundation wall. Okay, I'm going to use my foundation wall type to generate both my footing and my foundation. All right. Now, let me just, I'm going to pop into 3D at the same time in, I'm in my main level floor plan view. I'm going to do WT, window tile. And actually what I want to see is, I want this over here. So, there we go. There's my little 3D view. There's my floor plate. Okay. I want to show you what's happening in 3D as I'm working in my, my floor plate. Okay, so I'm in my main level floor plan. I'm going to draw my foundation walls here. And it's a little bit tricky because those foundation walls are going to be defined to show up on the level below the one I'm actually in, right? So in theory, you think about it, well, if they're defined to, to generate in the level below the one I'm looking at, I won't be able to see them as I generate them. And that's a true statement, okay? But the system does work, <laughs> I promise. So I'm going to click on the wall command while I'm in my main level here. I am going to choose my foundation wall as my wall type. I'm going to choose as my base constraint the basement level. And my top constraint is my main level. Okay. So base constraint is the basement. And the top constraint is main level. All right. I'm going to use my pick tool to start creating my foundation walls. And I think we can do uh, finish face exterior. And I'm just going to start clicking around the exterior of my upper level. And you'll see what's happening over here as I do that. Okay. So right here I click. Click. Oh, shoot. Hold on a second. What just happened? Main base constraint. Oh, it flip flopped them. What happened there? <laughs> All right, base constraint, basement, up to main level. Okay, hopefully that worked. Hell, it flip flopped them again. I wonder, there's one other thing I'm going to try if this flip flops again. Base constraint, basement, up to main level. Okay. Click. And I get an error. And it says, hey, none of the elements that are that you're creating are visible in the main level floor plan. And that's that's true. They're not going to be. They're going to be below it. And so I'm okay with that. So I just continue around. And you see as I'm generating these, these are populating all the way around my little building. You see how they're generating? These may not occur completely perfect. 
but that's okay. I can go back and I can alter them. But the main thing I want to do right now is to get them in place. Okay. All right. If these happen to form, like you forgot to choose finished face exterior and they, and they happen to maybe um, form on the wrong side, right? Like one pops out a little bit too much. I'm gonna show you how to align those. Um, but in general, my walls just generated really nicely, actually. Okay. So I'm going to close out of my main level here. And I want to make sure that all these foundation walls are lining up with the outside face of this um, upper wall, okay? So right now, um, it, looks, it looks like this wall is in line with this wall, but I'm just going to go around and make sure. I'm going to use the align command, AL, AL. And we know that we can align things in floor plan view, but I want to also show you that I can see how if, if I hover over the field, the, you know, the face of that wall, I can click, it highlights it. And I can come down here and near the boundary. See how I can pick that wall? Click. And it just makes sure they're aligned. Escape. Align. AL. Pick this, the face of that wall. I'm going to pick the face of this wall. And it says, hey, wait a minute. You know, we have kind of an error happening, but that's okay. Now they align. Okay. Uh, I think actually all of these aligned pretty well, so I don't really think I need to do it to all of them. But that's how I'm going to generate my, my basement floor plate. Okay, so now when I go to my basement, I have walls, which is wonderful, right? Defining that lower space. Any questions on any of that? Basements, when you're creating the walls, yep. It is. Yours is. So what you did, Gabriel, is you, um, when you created your walls, so you created them probably to center line of that wall, so it popped it out a little. But what you'll have to do is do what, what I was just doing, where you do align, AL, and you click the top. You see that? Click the top, and then click the bottom face. See how that highlights? Click. Yeah, do that all the way around. It will align it all. Yep. So as you saw, it kind of worked out for me, but, um, and I, <laughs> sometimes you're just so excited when things work out, right? <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, you have to watch the top and bottom constraint. So it toggled for me for whatever weird reason, right? When I changed the alignment, it toggled and the wall was going the wrong direction. So make sure you pay attention to the alignment. Make sure that you have your basement level defined. Um, make sure that you, when you're finished, if, you know, the foundation isn't completely aligned to the upper walls, make sure you go back and align it, right? The nice thing, again, about Revit is that even if you don't generate those walls uh, cr exactly correct the first time, meaning there's some slight, you know, misalignment or something, uh, you always have the ability to go back and kind of fix it, right? Uh, I'm going to go to a section view. Let's see here. Section one. Look how nice and lovely that looks. We've got our gorgeous um, walls. That one is, oh, it's overlapping with the floor. That's okay for now. I'm not too worried about that, but all these look really good. One thing I am noticing now is that my floor, my slab, doesn't quite go to my wall, right? So as you start modeling, it's not that we drew it incorrectly the first time. It's just that you know, maybe the parameters changed. Maybe this wall isn't quite as thick as it should or um, needs to be, right? So I'm going to think to myself, do I need to make my floor slab larger, like the outline border of it larger? Or does my foundation wall need to be thicker, right? And I think actually my foundation wall needs to be thicker. So it probably needs to come all the way over to here, right? So I'm going to measure this. We'll say... Tab, 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 I'm tabbing, trying to get that. There we go, one, so that's about 15 inches. So I drew it eight inches, and it actually needs to be a lot thicker, okay? And that's fine, we can change that. 
Although with that said, now that I need to change the foundation wall type, here's another really good illustration of some good practice in Revit, okay? So I have this wall and now I need to make it a lot thicker, right? Let me just, um, I'm gonna edit this to make it so that it's not gonna do what I want it to do. And I think, okay, I need to make it 15 inches instead of eight. So I'm gonna hit edit type, edit, changes from eight to 15. Okay, okay again. Oh, great. Well, that didn't really work out the way I had anticipated it working out, right? So I look at this wall and it has bumped out beyond the exterior wall. Okay, I'm gonna hit undo, control Z. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna make sure that my walls, I'm, gonna, I'm going to select all my lower level walls. I'm gonna hover, tab, click, Remember that? I'm gonna make sure that these say finish face exterior for the location line, okay? I had changed it to midpoint, which means that if I wanna go from eight to 15 inches, right, that's a seven inch increase, which means if this location line on that wall were center line, it would grow at three and a half inches out and three and a half inches to the inside. And that would inherently misalign the face of that exterior you know, wall. So I'm gonna make sure this is finished face exterior. I'm gonna hit edit type. Not to say that something couldn't go wrong. We're gonna do 15 inches now. Okay, okay. And, oh, the stars aligned except for on this side. <laughs> this one little wall, looks like it was still wall center line. Finish face exterior. Um, so I'm going to have to realign that one, but everything else looks like it worked pretty well. Okay, AL, click on the face, click on the face. What just happened there? This, this wall is kind of just, in general, wanting to cause issues, I think. That worked. Okay, I'm going to have to look at the floor plate. I think it's having a little bit of trouble. We might need to trim the walls. Anyway. Okay, but I have my foundation wall, it's the right thickness now. If I go back to my section and look at it, uh, everything looks pretty good, right? SD, shaded view. That one is bumped in, that's the odd one I think. Or maybe it's just bumped in because of where it's located on the floor plan. Let's go to the, to the basement level now. Oh. That's tricky. I have two, I gener I must have clicked twice there when I generated this. So it looks like I have an extra foundation wall. So I just deleted that. Well, that solves the problem. AL, align, click, click, and there we go. Okay. Let's go back to our section again, right? You see me constantly doing this. I'm constantly going back and forth from section view to floor plan to elevation, right? Um, and I'm looking at things and making sure that they're correct. And for now, you know, there we may have a few little weird inconsistencies happening, but I think in general, uh, everything looks pretty good. And now you notice the floor slab is a lot closer to where it needs to be, right? It looks like maybe the floor slab needs to align a little bit better with that, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much just yet because I still need to create my footings, okay? <clears throat> All right, any questions on creating the foundation walls? All right, let's create our footings then, right? And our footings are gonna be uh, the support for our foundation wall that sort of uh, spreads the load of that giant point load coming down onto the, the, uh, the earth, right? So we need to create our little footings. And I'm gonna make them larger than they need to be so that we can see how um, big they need to be. But right now, um, I don't really have everything I need just yet to really define them. Okay, I need to add another level. So our, our foundation wall is defined from our main level down to our basement. Our footings are gonna be defined from below that foundation wall and we'll make it significant at first and then we'll bring it back to where it needs to be. I'm gonna do a two foot footing and then we'll take it down to a, where it should be, more where it should be. But I need to create a footing level so I can define my footing from the footing up to the basement, okay? 
So I'm going to click on level. And I'm, I don't want a plan view of this because I don't need one really. So I'm going to try and remember to uncheck make plan view so I don't get another floor plan. And I'm going to generate my level here. Okay. And I'm gonna, you notice it has a black marker because it doesn't have a floor plan associated with it as opposed to a blue marker. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to call it uh, bottom of BO, bottom of footing, enter. We'll just leave it at it's negative one foot six, that's fine. Okay, so now I need to create my footings. All right. So the footings are going to be the same wall type as this basement wall, but they're going to be wider, okay? We're going to make them eight inches wider on either side of this uh, foundation wall. So I'm just going to use my little calculator, right? The foundation wall was 15 inches, and then I'm going to add, um, no, not, we'll, do, we'll add eight, in, eight inches to that, I think, in total. So 23. Right? So our footing is going to be 23 inches wide and go right underneath that foundation wall. So I click on my foundation wall. I'm going to hit edit type. This is on video, so don't worry if you're panicked about remembering all of it, right? <laughs> you're going to review it. Watch it again at fast speed. Um, I'm going to edit. I'm going to click duplicate. We will call this footing and we'll call it 23 inch. Hit OK, edit, all of this stays the same, but this is going to be 23 inches. Hit OK, OK again, oh, I changed that, I shouldn't change that. I changed my foundation wall from 8 inches to 15 inches, didn't I, and I didn't change the name of it. I should hit edit type and hit rename and change it to 15 inches, enter, okay, without, without altering the assembly, right, I just changed the name, so I remember, okay, so I just changed, or I created a footing type, and now I want to, I want to uh, add those, so we're going to add them in the same manner that we added the foundation wall, from the level above, but instead of the level above being my main level, it's actually going to be my basement level. So I'm going to pop into my basement level, and I'm going to start adding my footings. And you should see them start to form over here in this 3D view, right, as we start to generate those. So I'm going to, um, this time, I want my footings to form right at the center line of these foundation walls. So first thing I think of is, you know, sort of where I want these to form. So wall, I'm going to pick my footing, 23 inch, and location line is going to be the center line, wall center line this time. And I want these walls to go from the base constraint will be bottom of footing, and the top constraint will be up to the basement. Okay. Oh, and I, I went to choose my pick, and do you see how it toggled? Stinking things, huh? <laughs> so Revit is really, has a chronic issue with, the, with this toggle situation. So I'm constantly looking at things. Base constraint, basement. Oh, I thought something changed. Oh, it did, to main level. Nope, we want this to go to the basement. Okay, base constraint. Oh, it flip-flopped them. Uh, bottom of footing up to basement. There we go. So now I just click at the midpoint, click, and it says, hey, you can't see those from this view. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But I see them forming over here, so I just continue on. wonderful. And I have one more, it looks like. One more? Yeah. And now I have all my little footings generated there. It's that little guy. Anyway. So I go back to my 
section here, right? Look at that. I've got my little, I've got my little uh, footing. Okay. I could hit edit type and I could give this a few more inches. Let's give it eight more inches. One foot, two foot. Okay, looks good. If I wanted to make this footing deeper, I could say make it negative 12 feet down. And because I've established a relationship between the wall and the level, that works. Let's make it a foot, negative 11, and it works too. Okay, so now my little building is looking a lot more complete, a lot more the way it should, except for its missing roof, right? Um, but we'll remedy that next week. Hide in view elements. Looks wonderful. Okay. Any questions on the footing or foundation? Okay. So uh, I think so for your now for your cover sheet, right? Oop, one of your little oh, because I created a new level, of course. Click click. Click on it, right click, hide in view, element. Because I created a new level, it added a, a new level into my view on my cover sheet, right? So I want to get rid of that. Um, but I think uh, our house is starting to look a little bit more complete now, right? <laughs> All right. Any questions about any of that so far? Yep. The wall thickness. Let me write that today because I, I wasn't planning on doing this today. So I'll write the assignment and put the numbers in there for you so that you can create these. Yeah, but if you watch the video again and you create it identically to what we did here in class, that would be correct. That'd be fine. Yep. All right. So I'll post an assignment today for this. Like I said, I wasn't quite planning on doing this today, but I think this was a good topic to talk about. Uh, if you want to get ahead, like I said, uh, with regard to the roof and you wanted to start adding the roof to your model, you could do that because I have those extra lectures for the roof. Um, so that would be, I think, a, you know, a good thing to do if you wanted to get ahead. And then um, next week, so next week we'll talk about roofs and stairs uh, and we will keep moving.